This is one of the best retro builds you can put together right now and honestly, I think it's seriously underrated. What's going on everybody, it's Badger the way back here again and in today's video we're taking a look at this Dell Optiplex 7010. It's an older office PC that's been sitting on one of my shelves, but we are about to turn it into something way more exciting. Quick specs checks. This is a Dell Optiplex 7010 running an Intel Core i7-4790 CPU with 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM. For graphics, I got a GT710 with 2 gigs of DDR3. Nothing fancy here. Everything is left completely stock and we'll be installing Batocera straight from a USB thumb drive. To get this build ready, you'll just need a few peripherals a wired keyboard and mouse, a USB drive and a controller. I'll be using the EZSMX X05 controller. It's wireless with a USB dongle, but you can go wired if you like. You'll also need either a Wi-Fi dongle or just an Ethernet cable for network access. And of course, your old Optiplex PC. With that said, go ahead and plug your USB drive into your PC. Head over to batocera.org and grab the latest ISO. Then use Balena Etcher to flash the image onto your USB. After just a few minutes, your drive will be ready to start the installation. Now let's go ahead and boot from our USB. With the keyboard and thumb drive plugged into the Optiplex, Power it on and repeatedly press the F12 key. That will bring up the boot menu on most Dell systems. From here, just select your USB drive and Batocera will start loading. The first boot might take a minute or two while everything sets up, but once it's done, you'll land right into Batocera interface, ready to go. Once Batocera boots up, press the spacebar to open the main menu. The first thing you'll want to do is get connected to the internet. Head down to network settings, select Wi-Fi and enter your credentials. After that, go back to the main menu and open system settings. Scroll down until you see install on a new disk. From here, choose your target drive. In my case, it's a Kingston SSD. Confirm your selection, click install and Batocera will take care of the rest. Once it's finished, the system will automatically reboot and you'll be running Batocera directly from your SSD. Once the installation is complete and you're back in Batocera, the first thing I like to do is set up my controller. I'm using the EZSMX X05 with the e USB dongle and Batocera picks it up right away. But just to make sure everything is mapped correctly, it's always a good idea to configure it manually. Head into Control and Bluetooth settings, select Controller Mapping, and then follow the on-screen prompts to assign each button. One of the best new features for Batocera is RGSX. To get it set up, connect the keyboard and press F1 to open the file manager. From here, head into Applications and select Xterm. Then just type in the command I'll leave in a pinned comment for easy access. And while we are here, I do want to mention this video is for educational purposes only. If you are enjoying the content so far, don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing. I got plenty more Batocera and retro builds coming your way. Of course, Batocera has a few more surprises built in. And one of the biggest is Kodi. Just press start on your controller, scroll down and select Kodi Media Center. From here, you can turn your Optiplex into a full streaming box. I paired mine with my Jellyfin server, so now it doubles as a powerful media hub. And the best part, you can navigate everything with your co game controller or even pair it with a USB remote for the true setup top box experience. 
Now, of course, there are plenty more tips and tricks you can do with Batocera. And if you've seen my last video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But at its core, Batocera really excels at retro gaming. So with that said, let's start things off with a true classic, Adventure Island on the original Nintendo. Next on the list, we got an all-time favorite, Crazy Taxi on the Sega Dreamcast. I'm running this with all the default Batocera settings, and it plays great right out of the box. No extra tweaks needed here, just jump in and enjoy the arcade fun. And of course, we can't skip the PlayStation 1. Here's Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. This runs beautifully on Batocera with the default settings, and honestly, it's just as fun as today as it was in the 90s. Moving up a generation, Batocera also handles PSP games. Here's Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. It does run with uh, a few issues, but it's still pretty impressive to see this working on all the hardware. And to push things a bit further, I want to test some PlayStation 2 titles. Here we have God of War 2 running on the PS2 emulator. And while performance isn't perfect, it's definitely playable. So, in the end, this old Dell Optiplex 7010 turned out to be an awesome little retro gaming and media machine. Patocera runs great on this hardware and even dips into higher-end systems like PSP and PS2. For an inexpensive build, it is a really underrated option that can give you hours of fun. Don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, thanks for watching!